To produce examples of finite fields, we've seen one method for construction. We take a prime integer p, we form the ideal generated by p in the integers, then we take the quotient ring of the integers modulo that ideal. That produces the integers modulo p, and we've seen before that that's a field. Now, what about fields that are not of prime order? So we want to apply our results on maximal ideals and fields to produce fields of this type. First, let's review the basics of finite fields. So what we've seen so far, inside of a finite field, we have the prime field. So this is going to be the small subfield generated by the element 1. That's always going to be either a z mod p with p prime or the rational numbers. Because our field is finite, it's going to be a z mod p. Once I have that, then we have that our field is of characteristic p. Just recall that means if we take any x in our field, if I take p times x, and it's the same as adding x to itself p times, we get 0 for any x. Now, if we check the rules for vector spaces, we'll see that our field f is going to be a vector space over the field z mod p. So once we pick a basis, we'll have that the number of elements in our finite field. It's always going to be p raised to some power, okay, say k, where k is positive. For here, we're to focus on constructing finite fields when p is 2, k is equal to 2 or 3. So we're looking at finite fields of order 4 or 8. In this case, the prime field will be z mod 2. Now, let's review our construction for residue fields. So the idea is, I want to build new fields from old fields. So we assume we have some field f. We could form the ring of polynomials okay, in x with coefficients in f. In there, we're going to look for irreducible polynomials. Okay, so these are just going to be polynomials that only factor trivially. Now, if I can find an irreducible polynomial, okay, say so degree greater than or equal to 1, that's going to give us a maximal ideal in f adjoint x. Because we have a maximal ideal, we can form the quotient, and that gives us what we call the residue field. So I'll call that f prime. Now, the way we should think of this, if we want to actually compute in this field that we've just created, we should think of it as we're adjoining an element x that satisfies the property f of x equal to 0. So if we want to do computations, we're always going to go back to this irreducible polynomial here. Now, when we work with this a little bit, one thing we'll note, if f has degree n, then all elements in our residue field are going to be of the form a0 plus a1x all the way up through a sub n minus 1, x to the n minus 1. When I get a term that has an x to the n, I can go to this equation here to reduce x to the n to something in terms of lower exponents. So if you note, know, if all these a's are coming from a z mod p, when we do the counting, we'll see that the number of elements in f prime will be p to the n. So n is going to be the degree of the irreducible polynomial that we use. So if we want finite fields of order 4 and 8, okay, we're going to look at polynomials over z mod 2. I'm looking for irreducible polynomials okay, of degree 2 and degree 3. To get a field of order 4, our prime field is z mod 2. We're looking for an irreducible polynomial coefficients in z mod 2 of degree 2. Now, if I'm working with degree 2 polynomials with coefficients in a field, okay, if they're monic, only two things can happen. Either they're irreducible or they factor into linear factors. Okay, and here, A and B are in the field that we're working in. There's an easy test for linear factors. If I have, for any element in our field, that P of C is equal to 0, then X minus C divides P of X. So, if I'm looking for linear factors, I need only check against every element in the field to see if 0 comes out. Now, we're working over Z mod 2. So, for instance, if I consider X squared plus 1, P of 0 is equal to 1, P of 1 is equal to 1 plus 1. Okay, that's 2, but that goes to 0. So I have the x plus 1 divides x squared plus 1. Okay, if we factor, we just take x plus 1 times itself. 
Okay, there, the 2x in the middle goes away because we're working over z mod 2. Now, if I try x squared plus x plus 1, p of 0 is 1, p of 1 is 1. We've just checked against all the field elements, so that means this polynomial is irreducible over z mod 2. Now, we could use our general theory of residue fields now. So I'll form the ideal generated by x squared plus x plus 1. We form the residue field, and that's going to give us our field with four elements. Now, the way we should think of this, what we're doing here is sending all elements in the ideal to zero. So this is going to be the same as adjoining an element u to z mod 2, such that u squared is equal to u plus 1, or u squared plus u plus 1 is 0. Okay, we're working over z mod 2, so plus is equal to minus. Now, that means, okay, we have four elements here. Let's see how everything interacts. Now, one fact to keep an eye on, and it'll be good for the next example, okay, we'll prove this later. We take the non-zero elements of a finite field, we'll form a cyclic group under multiplication. So, here we have four elements in our field. Okay, if we throw away zero, we're expecting to get out of here a z mod three. Now, what elements do we have? We have zero. I have u. We have u squared. So by the relation, u squared is equal to u plus one. If I take u cubed, okay, that's u squared times u. So that's u times u plus one. That's u squared plus u. And then I use u squared equal to u plus one again to get all of this equal to one itself. So here we have our four elements. We have zero, one, u, and u plus one. Interesting thing to note, we have that u inverse is equal to u plus one, and that's by this computation here. Let's try eight elements. Same procedure, the prime field is z mod two. Only now I'm looking for an irreducible cubic with coefficients in z mod two. Now, possibilities are, okay, factors into three linear factors, factors into a linear and an irreducible quadratic, or it's an irreducible cubic. You'll note, in the first two cases, our trick from before will work. So either you're gonna have a zero, that's in Z mod two, or you're irreducible. Now, if we check against polynomials, okay, we'll note, x cubed plus x plus one has p of zero equal to one, p of one equal to one. So this is irreducible over z mod two. Okay, also looking around, you'll see that x cubed plus x squared plus one also works. I'll leave it to you to reproduce all the work that follows with this polynomial. We also note, if we were looking for 16, okay, I would be looking for degree four, our trick isn't gonna work. I'll have to worry about the case of having two irreducible quadratics multiplied together, and then we need more technique. Now, getting back to this one, okay, I could form the residue field, so we form the ideal generated by x cubed plus x plus one. And then if we wanna look at elements specifically, we just pretend we're adjoining an element u, subject to the relation that u cubed plus u plus one is zero, or we have that u cubed is equal to u plus one. Now that means we could write every element in our field as a plus bu plus cu squared. We take all of these elements, okay, we can list them, and we count, and we see that there are eight. Now, checking that the non-zero elements form a cyclic group, so what do we do? We have zero, counting all the elements. I have u, I have u squared, it's on the list. u cubed, we can use a relation to get u plus one. U to the fourth, we multiply u plus one by u, I get u squared plus u, which is on the list. Now we keep working down. So u to the fifth is u squared plus u plus one. u to the sixth is u squared plus one. And then we get to u to the seventh. Okay, I multiply u squared plus one by u. And then out comes one. So we know we have a cyclic group of order seven generated by u. Now what's nice about this, okay, I have these two representations for elements. This lets us find the inverses easily. So for instance, if I want the inverse of u, okay, what do I do? Well, I look for u the sixth, because we know that u times u the sixth is u the seventh, which is equal to one. Looking up u the sixth, we get u squared plus one. Okay, and then we could do that for all the other elements. Of course, one way to do it, 
pick your favorite element, say u plus one. If I want the inverse, I just multiply by every other element until I find the one that produces a one. So it's also a check on this procedure. So for instance, if I want the inverse of u plus one, well that's u cubed, inverse will be u to the fourth, that's u squared plus u, and to check, u squared plus u times u plus one, when I work that out, out comes a one as promised.